So uh, everybody, thank you for this time. Um, I'm going to talk about mental health in today's world as part of this provider take care of thyself. So just watch this uh, uh, very closely. You see what I did there, and, and then I just say, you know, it's physician stuff. So uh, I have no material conflicts uh, pertinent to this presentation. I do have some disclaimers, though. I don't call doctors providers. That's a big way that there's uh, uh, some aspect of burnout here. So, um, you know, we are physicians, we are surgeons, and they're allied providers. And there's not to make disparaging comments about them, but all of you earned your titles, and we shouldn't take away your titles because of uh, other means and other ways. Uh, I'm not a mental health expert. Sorry if I've, if I've missed some important content at the end of this. And I don't mean to make you upset. I just want to elevate our conversations in this, uh, at times, uncomfortable topic. So what has stressed us out? Clearly COVID, clearly uh, since uh, March of 2020, we've been through a lot more stress than, than uh, we had before this point. What about other things? Reimbursement is clearly dwindling or declining. That's another major stressor. And lastly, or not really lastly, but I only have six minutes, uh, the impact of uh, EHR on the physician burdens of burnout. And I just want to share with you, uh, Brene Brown, it's, uh, this is an orthopedic conference, and I'm, I'm quote, going to quote Brene Brown. She's an amazing uh, speaker and writer and has been really influential in looking at uh, um, the aspects of shame uh, uh, thinking about uh, how you can change and show your vulnerability and eventually become a better leader. And so there's a couple quotes from Brene. What's the greater risk? Letting go of what people think or letting go of how I feel, what I believe and who I am and her, and her other one uh, amongst many. Vulnerability is the birthplace of innovation, creativity and change. So we all, all have a vulnerable story and I, ex I expect you all to go home and do what I just did here. I had to do this for some people in my own organization. So I'm going to try and be vulnerable for a second, just as a part of this. I'm the little one uh, up on the uh, the left uh, uh, on that screen, or I guess my dad's holding me. I'm a, I'm a twin. My dad was a Mexican immigrant, broke, uh, uh, spoke broken English, uh, um, had no education, no formal education, worked on the docks in L.A. My twin brother and I, we won a city championship for, in Los Angeles, better than most state championships. I will say my older brother's an athletic trainer, kind of lame story. There's me graduating. There's me getting married. There's me with some partners uh, just being silly. There's me and my, uh, my kids. There's me with a lot of famous people. There's me with my dad before he passed away. And there's be, me with my mom and family before she passed away. I expect you all to go home and tell your own story. Tell your own story because it makes you realize who you really are. It makes you think about what you are. It's really interesting they asked me to do this. May is mental health awareness. Awareness Month, and so there's a part of this at the end that's, that it's about that uh, ribbon has stopped the stigma. We all have mental health uh, greatness and, and health in our families. We all have mental health illness in our families if we're completely honest with ourselves, and it's time to start talking about this more. One in five American adults, suicide is the le tenth leading cause of death in the United States. Uh, one in 25 adults in America live with a serious mental health illness. Uh, you know people in your own family who are taking meds right now for mental health problems. You know that, and it's okay to talk about it. What about orthopedics? Terrible issue going on in America. These factors influencing uh, U.S. physician and surgeon, I'm quoting an article, sorry. Orthopedic surgeons have the highest prevalence of suicide among surgical fields. We know people. We've, we're friends with people who have, who have committed suicide. This is a, a real issue that we cannot av avoid. And I just want you, if you can, pull out a, a camera. Take a picture of this. This is what you need in a time of crisis for yourself, for others who you love. I can go back to that. And, and what is mental health? It's really a, a continuum of, of uh, not a binary state, ranging from excellent mental health to severe symptoms such as panic attacks, major depressive episodes. you got to see it in that way. And we're all probably moving from one side to the other. And I do want to say that stress versus burnout, we're all stressed, and stress is over-engagement, leads to anxiety, it's physically tolling. Burnout is disengagement, uh, blended or distant emotions, a uh, sense of helplessness, and it, it, it's also, it's emotionally tolling. 
And you look at this, how do we keep our doctors engaged versus uh, being, becoming burnt out? The, the things that we can do to optimize them, to have them be in the vigor state, dedication, and, 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 and better states rather than be uh, exhausted, uh, become cynical and, and uh, inefficient. I was just talking to uh, Reza Jaziera how at times I'm burnt, I'm burnt out and cynical. It's funny. Um, um, Mental wellness, it's, a, it's an inner, internal resource that helps us to think, feel, connect, and function. It's the active process that helps us to build resilience, grow, and flourish. Resilience, what's that about? Really, there's some modern definitions of resilience. It's advancing despite adversity. It's having the, the, the vigor and it's having the grit to kind of get through the tough times because it's easy to get through the easy times, but it's, it takes a lot to get through the hard times. So why do you all do this? Your cup, why do you keep your cup full? Why, what, what, what fills you up? What's your why? Is it because you like to practice good medicine? For, me, for all of you, it's probably that. Is it the research and publications? Is it the podium? Is it leadership roles? There's been a lot of work recently done on these ideas of specific causes. Speak Up Ortho has had a tremendous effect on the way we think about who we are as a, as a group of physicians and how we treat each other. Black women in orthopedic surgeons, this med bikini where a lot of female orthopedists were wearing bikinis and somebody said, that's inappropriate. You know, doctors can have fun too. They can show pictures. If men are in, in uh, uh, swimming suits, women can be in swimming suits. This is what can help drive us away from the burnout and the things that are bad. Well, I'm over time. No, keep what, going. What about your family? Your family or your spouse or your loved one, the people that are important to you, they also can help you to kind of help get through and, and, be, and give you that, that, uh, uh, that grit to get through the hard times. I'm almost done here. What about spirituality? The very last thing is even atheism. And I'm sorry if I didn't capture your religious experience on here. But there's a lot of work that's been done that says spirituality and well-being later in life does lead you to have a more wellness and less... Uh, uh, badness. Gratitude. I'm going to do something right now. Paul, Rafi, Joe Abood, thank you very much for inviting me to this. You know what I just did? I helped myself because I thank them. My blood pressure goes down when I show gratitude. Everything gets better for me in showing them that. It improves sleep, cardiovascular health, adherence to medications, mood, optimism, and hope, and reduces all those bad things. I'm going to go a little bit faster. There's a lot of books on the idea of charity, not charity, charity of giving to others. That's really critical, being a giver. Look at these books. Take a picture of this. If you give to others in a big way, you help yourself, too. It helps your own feelings of, of well-being and wellness. Exercise, that's the place I work out every uh, Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. I'm on those reformers, me and uh, a bunch of people younger than me. And there's a lot of evidence that shows exercise. That's really cool. We're going to rock out. Um, uh, <laughs> the effect of exercise is really high on resilience, and it's really been proven multiple times over. It's really funny. Just this week, this guy, it's hard to read, but I'm going to blow something up. This is the leader of my organization in Southern California. He's a urologist by training. He actually uh, trained, he actually worked at the same place Rafi does in, in Kaiser Permanente in Southern California. And so he just wrote us this thing and said, hey, um, mental health is such a stigma. I want to do a filming of all of you to talk about what you have had stressors on so that you can become uh, a part of the, the way that we can get out of this. So it's really interesting. That came out this week. There's checklists that you can find online to kind of be checking into yourself and checking into your loved ones. I'm going to show you some tools and I'll be done. Mindfulness apps are out there. There are many. I use this fitness app to tell me if I'm standing, exercising, and walking enough. And then there's a sleep app. Sleep is so incredibly important to all of us. And I, don't, I didn't have a lot of time to dive into any of this too much, but you should be tracking your sleep and making sure you get en enough, except when you come to this amazing conference and, and stay out late at night. Um, and let's break the stigma. I'm done. There's lots of current stressors. We can all be vulnerable. So ortho suicide is a chilling reality. Help is available. Burnout, stress, and engagement are all different things. Resilience can be built. There's many ways to enhance well-being. There's tools to help break the stigma. I love my family. All right, thank you guys. So, Ron, great job. Love the fact that you stood outside the podium with a microphone. That was perfect for this uh, type of talk. Went way over time, terrible. 
One question. What's the one thing you've done in your practice to make your life better and help you deal with stress you know, throughout? You know, we have a lot of, uh, we have a more liberal way of approaching our practices in my practice because of the, the way our setup is. And so I've built a way that I can have my Fridays to me, whether it's administrative time or less, less clinical time. And so that's freed me up and kind of freed my mind a lot more. So my mental health is definitely getting enhanced by this fucking music next door. So, uh, I, I just want to say, Ron, I'm very sincere about this. Thank you. That is such an important topic for all of us that we sort of sweep under the rug because we don't think it's okay to talk about. That band, by the way, is Pink <laughs> from Philadelphia, and Comcast is having a meeting. So we did chew them out, but they're still playing their drums. Awesome. We're, not, we're not as big as Pink, but next year we will be. They have 20 seconds left on the live text. I just want to say something, Ron. Great talk, very timely. Um, I just want to make a comment. I wasn't going to gong you because that's too important of a talk to have. Um, but as someone that recently has undergone uh, some health issues, I mean, at one point, actually, I was, as the propofol was going in, they were calling out my anesthesia class as a class four. Um, so what I will say is that having the ability to have gratitude and grace and a positive attitude are the things that, number one, can keep you alive, and number two, give you a richer life with your friends, your colleagues, and your family. So thank you very much.